Section twenty of the Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter nine, part two, for Lent or a fast dinner, from to make fine fritters. Dry some of the finest flour well before the fire. Mix it with a quart of new milk, not too thick, six or eight eggs, a little nutmeg, a little mace, a little salt, and a quarter of a pint of sack or ale, or a glass of brandy. Beat them well together, then make them pretty thick with pippins, and fry them dry. To make apple fritters. Beat the yolks of eight eggs, the whites of four, well together, and strain them into a pan. Then take a quart of cream, make it as hot as you can bear your finger in it. Then put to it a quarter of a pint of sack, three quarters of a pint of ale, and make a posset of it. When it is cool, put it to your eggs, beating it well together. Then put in nutmeg, ginger, salt, and flour to your liking. Your batter should be pretty thick. Then put in pippins sliced or scraped, and fry them in a good deal of butter quick. To make curd fritters. Having a handful of curds and a handful of flour, and ten eggs well beaten and strained, some sugar, cloves, mace, and nutmeg beat, a little saffron. Stir all well together, and fry them quick, and of a fine light brown. To make fritters royal. Take a quart of new milk, put it into a skillet or saucepan, and as the milk boils up, pour in a pint of sack. Let it boil up, then take it off, and let it stand five or six minutes, then skim off all the curd, and put it into a basin. Beat it up well with six eggs, season it with nutmeg, then beat it with a whisk, add flour to make it as thick as batter usually is, put in some fine sugar, and fry them quick. To make skirret fritters. Take a pint of pulp of skirrets, and a spoonful of flour, the yolks of four eggs, sugar and spice, make into a thick batter, and fry them quick. To make white fritters. Having some rice, wash it in five or six several waters, and dry it very well before the fire then beat it in a mortar very fine and sift it through a lawn sieve that it may be very fine you must have at least an ounce of it then put it into a saucepan just wet with milk and when it is well incorporated with it add to it another pint of milk set the whole over a stove or a very slow fire and take care to keep it always moving Put in a little sugar and some candied lemon peel grated. Keep it over the fire till it is almost come to the thickness of a fine paste. Flour a peel, pour it on it, and spread it abroad with a rolling pin. When it is quite cold, cut it into little morsels, taking care they stick not one to the other. Flour your hands and roll up your fritters handsomely and fry them. When you serve them up, pour a little orange flour water over them and sugar these make a pretty side dish or are very pretty to garnish a fine dish with to make syringed fritters take about a pint of water and a bit of butter the bigness of an egg with some lemon peel green if you can get it rasp preserved lemon peel and crisped orange flowers Put all together in a stew pan over the fire, and when boiling, throw in some fine flour. Keep it stirring. Put in, by degrees, more flour till your batter be thick enough. Take it off the fire. Then take an ounce of sweet almonds, four bitter ones, pound them in a mortar, stir in two Naples biscuits crumbled, two eggs beat. Stir all together, and more eggs till your batter be thin enough to be syringed. Fill your syringe, your batter being hot, syringe your fritters in it, to make it of a true lover's knot, and being well coloured, serve them up for a side dish. At another time, you may rub a sheet of paper with butter, 
over which you may syringe your fritters and make them in what shape you please your butter being hot turn the paper upside down over it and your fritters will easily drop off when fried strew them with sugar and glaze them to make vine leaf fritters take some of the smallest vine leaves you can get and having cut off the great stalks put them in a dish with some french brandy green lemon rasped and some sugar take a good handful of fine flour mixed with white wine or ale let your butter be hot and with a spoon drop in your batter take great care they don't stick one to the other on each fritter lay a leaf fry them quick and strew sugar over them and glaze them with a red hot shovel with all fritters made with milk and eggs you should have beaten cinnamon and sugar in a saucer and either squeeze an orange over it or pour a glass of white wine and so throw sugar all over the dish and they should be fried in a good deal of fat therefore they are best fried in beef dripping or hog's lard when it can be done to make clary fritters take your clary leaves cut off the stalks dip them one by one in a batter made with milk and flour your butter being hot fry them quick this is a pretty heartening dish for a sick or weak person and comfrey leaves do the same way to make apple phrases cut your apples in thick slices and fry them of a fine light brown take them up and lay them to drain keep them as whole as you can and either pare them or let it alone then make a batter as follows take five eggs leaving out two whites beat them up with cream and flour and a little sack make it the thickness of a pancake batter pour in a little melted butter nutmeg and a little sugar let your batter be hot and drop in your fritters and on every one lay a slice of apple and then more batter on them fry them of a fine light brown take them up and strew some double refined sugar all over them to make an almond phrase get a pound of jordan almonds blanched steep them in a pint of sweet cream ten yolks of eggs and four whites take out the almonds and pound them in a mortar fine then mix them again in the cream and eggs put in sugar and grated white bread stir them well together put some fresh butter into the pan let it be hot and pour it in stirring it in the pan till they are of a good thickness and when it is enough turn it into a dish throw sugar over it and serve it up to make pancakes take a quart of milk beat in six or eight eggs leaving half the whites out mix it well till your batter is of a fine thickness you must observe to mix your flour first with a little milk then add the rest by degrees put in two spoonfuls of beaten ginger a glass of brandy a little salt stir all together make your stew pan very clean put in a piece of butter as big as a walnut then pour in a ladle full of batter which will make a pancake moving the pan round that the batter be all over the pan shake the pan and when you think that side is enough toss it if you can't turn it cleverly and when both sides are done lay it in a dish before the fire and so do the rest you must take care they are dry when you send them to table strew a little sugar over them to make fine pancakes take half a pint of cream half a pint of sack the yolks of eighteen eggs beat fine a little salt half a pound of fine sugar a little beaten cinnamon mace and nutmeg then put in as much flour as will run thin over the pan and fry them in fresh butter this sort of pancake will not be crisp but very good a second sort of fine pancakes take a pint of cream and eight eggs well beat a nutmeg grated a little salt half a pound of good dish butter melted 
mix all together with as much flour as will make them into thin batter fry them nice and turn them on the back of a plate a third sort take six new-laid eggs well beat mix them with a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of sugar some grated nutmeg and as much flour as will make the batter of a proper thickness fry these fine pancakes in small pans and let your pans be hot you must not put above the bigness of a nutmeg of butter at a time into the pan a fourth sort called a choir of paper take a pint of cream six eggs three spoonfuls of fine flour three of sack one of orange flour water a little sugar and half a nutmeg grated half a pound of melted butter almost cold mingle all well together and butter the pan for the first pancake let them run as thin as possible when they are just coloured they are enough and so do with all the fine pancakes to make rice pancakes take a quart of cream and three spoonfuls of flour of rice set it on a slow fire and keep it stirring till it is thick as pap stir in half a pound of butter a nutmeg grated then pour it out into an earthen pan and when it is cold stir in three or four spoonfuls of flour a little salt some sugar nine eggs well beaten mix all well together and fry them nicely when you have no cream use new milk and one spoonful more of the flour of rice to make a pupton of apples pare some apples take out the cores and put them into a skillet to a quart mugful heaped put in a quarter of a pound of sugar and two spoonfuls of water do them over a slow fire keep them stirring add a little cinnamon when it is quite thick and like marmalade let it stand till cool beat up the yolks of four or five eggs and stir in a handful of grated bread and a quarter of a pound of fresh butter then form it into what shape you please and bake it in a slow oven and then turn it upside down on a plate for a second course to make black caps cut twelve large apples in halves and take out the cores place them on a thin patty pan or mazarine as close together as they can lie with the flat side downwards squeeze a lemon in two spoonfuls of orange flour water and pour over them shred some lemon peel fine and throw over them and grate fine sugar all over set them in a quick oven and half an hour will do them when you send them to table throw fine sugar all over the dish to bake apples whole put your apples into an earthen pan with a few cloves a little lemon peel some coarse sugar a glass of red wine put them into a quick oven and they will take an hour baking to stew pears pare six pears and either quarter them or do them whole they make a pretty dish with one whole the rest cut in quarters and the cores taken out lay them in a deep earthen pot with a few cloves a piece of lemon peel a gill of red wine and a quarter of a pound of fine sugar if the pears are very large they will take half a pound of sugar and half a pint of red wine cover them close with brown paper and bake them till they are enough serve them hot or cold just as you like them and they will be very good with water in the place of wine to stew pears in a saucepan put them into a saucepan with the ingredients as before cover them and do them over a slow fire when they are enough take them off add a pennyworth of cochineal bruised very fine to stew pears purple pare four pears cut them into quarters core them put them into a stew pan with a quarter of a pint of water a quarter of a pound of sugar cover them with a pewter plate then cover the pan with the lid and do them over a slow fire look at them often for fear of melting the plate 
when they are enough and the liquor looks of a fine purple take them off and lay them in your dish with the liquor when cold serve them up for a side dish at a second course or just as you please to stew pippins whole take twelve golden pippins pare them put the parings into a saucepan with water enough to cover them a blade of mace two or three cloves a piece of lemon peel let them simmer till there is just enough to stew the pippins in then strain it and put it into the saucepan again with sugar enough to make it like a syrup then put them in a preserving pan or clean stew pan or large saucepan and pour the syrup over them let there be enough to stew them in when they are enough which you will know by the pippins being soft take them up lay them in a little dish with the syrup when cold serve them up or hot if you choose it a pretty made dish take half a pound of almonds blanched and beat fine with a little rose or orange flower water then take a quart of sweet thick cream and boil it with a piece of cinnamon and mace sweeten it with sugar to your palate and mix it with your almonds stir it well together and strain it through a sieve let your cream cool and thicken it with the yolks of six eggs then garnish a deep dish and lay paste at the bottom then put in shred artichoke bottoms being first boiled upon that a little melted butter shred citron and candied orange so do till your dish is near full then pour in your cream and bake it without a lid when it is baked scrape sugar over it and serve it up hot half an hour will bake it to make kickshaws make puff paste roll it thin and if you have any moulds work it upon them make them up with preserved pippins you may fill some with gooseberries some with raspberries or what you please then close them up and either bake or fry them throw grated sugar over them and serve them up pan perdu or cream toasts having two french rolls cut them into slices as thick as your finger crumb and crust together lay them on a dish put to them a pint of cream and half a pint of milk strew them over with beaten cinnamon and sugar turn them frequently till they are tender but take care not to break them then take them from the cream with the slice break four or five eggs turn your slices of bread in the eggs and fry them in clarified butter make them of a good brown colour but not black scrape a little sugar over them they may be served for a second course dish but are fittest for supper salamagundi for a middle dish at supper in the top plate in the middle which should stand higher than the rest take a fine pickled herring bone it take off the head and mince the rest fine in the other plates round put the following things in one pare a cucumber and cut it very thin in another apples pared and cut small in another an onion peeled and cut small in another two hard eggs chopped small the whites in one and the yolks in another pickled gherkins in another cut small in another celery cut small in another pickled red cabbage chopped fine take some watercresses clean washed and picked stick them all about and between every plate or saucer and throw nasturtium flowers about the cresses you must have oil and vinegar and lemon to eat with it if it is prettily set out it will make a pretty figure in the middle of the table or you may lay them in heaps in a dish if you have not all these ingredients set out your plates or saucers with just what you fancy and in the room of a pickled herring you may mince anchovies to make a tansy take ten eggs break them into a pan put to them a little salt beat them very well then put to them eight ounces of loaf sugar beat fine and a pint of the juice of spinach and a little juice of tansy 
mix them well together and strain it into a quart of cream then grate in eight ounces of naples biscuit or white bread a nutmeg grated a quarter of a pound of jordan almonds beat in a mortar with a little juice of tansy to your taste mix these all together put it into a stew pan with a piece of butter as large as a pippin set it over a slow charcoal fire keep it stirring till it is hardened very well then butter a dish very well put in your tansy bake it and when it is enough turn it out on a pie plate squeeze the juice of an orange over it and throw sugar all over garnish with orange cut into quarters and sweetmeats cut into long bits and lay all over its side another way take a pint of cream and half a pint of blanched almonds beat fine with rose and orange flower water stir them together over a slow fire when it boils take it off and let it stand till cold then beat in ten eggs grate in a small nutmeg four naples biscuits a little grated bread sweeten to your taste and if you think it is too thick put in some more cream the juice of spinach to make it green stir it well together and either fry it or bake it if you do fry it do one side first and then with a dish turn the other to make a hedgehog take two pounds of sweet almonds blanched beat them well in a mortar with a little canary and orange flower water to keep them from oiling make them into a stiff paste then beat in the yolks of twelve eggs leave out five of the whites put to it a pint of cream sweeten it with sugar put in half a pound of sweet butter melted set it on a furnace or slow fire and keep continually stirring till it is stiff enough to be made into the form of a hedgehog then stick it full of blanched almond slit and stuck up like the bristles of a hedgehog then put it into a dish take a pint of cream and the yolks of four eggs beat up and mix with the cream sweeten to your palate and keep them stirring over a slow fire all the time till it is hot then pour it into your dish round the hedgehog let it stand till it is cold and serve it up or you may make a fine hartshorn jelly and pour into the dish which will look very pretty you may eat wine and sugar with it or eat it without or cold cream sweetened with a glass of white wine in it and the juice of a seville orange and pour it into the dish it will be pretty for a change this is a pretty side dish at a second course or in the middle for supper or in a grand dessert plump two currants for the eyes or make it thus for change take two pounds of sweet almonds blanched twelve bitter ones beat them in a marble mortar well together with canary and orange flower water two spoonfuls of the tincture of saffron two spoonfuls of the juice of sorrel beat them into a fine paste put in half a pound of melted butter mix it up well a little nutmeg and beaten mace an ounce of citron an ounce of orange peel both cut fine mix them in the yolks of twelve eggs and half the whites beat up and mixed in half a pint of cream half a pint of double refined sugar and work it up all together if it is not stiff enough to make up into the form you would have it you must have a mould for it butter it well then put in your ingredients and bake it the mould must be made in such a manner as to have the head peeping out when it comes out of the oven have ready some almonds blanched and slit and boiled up in sugar till brown stick it all over with the almonds and for sauce have red wine and sugar made hot and the juice of an orange send it hot to table for a first course you may leave out the saffron and sorrel and make it up like chickens or any other shape you please or alter the sauce to your fancy butter sugar and white wine is a pretty sauce for either baked or boiled and you may make the sauce of what colour you please 
or put it into a mould with half a pound of currants added to it and boil it for a pudding you may use cochineal in the room of saffron the following liquor you may make to mix with your sauces beat an ounce of cochineal very fine put in a pint of water in a skillet and a quarter of an ounce of rock alum boil it till the goodness is out strain it into a phial with an ounce of fine sugar and it will keep six months to make pretty almond puddings take a pound and a half of blanched almonds beat them fine with a little rose water a pound of grated bread a pound and a quarter of fine sugar a quarter of an ounce of cinnamon and a large nutmeg beat fine half a pound of melted butter mixed with the yolks of eggs and four whites beat fine a pint of sack a pint and a half of cream some rose or orange flower water boil the cream and tie a little bag of saffron and dip in the cream to colour it first beat your eggs very well and mix with your batter beat it up then the spice then the almonds then the rose water and wine by degrees beating it all the time then the sugar and then the cream by degrees keeping it stirring and a quarter of a pound of vermicelli stir all together and have some hog's guts nice and clean fill them only half full and as you put in the ingredients here and there put in a bit of citron tie both ends of the gut tight and boil them about a quarter of an hour you may add currants for change to make fried toasts take a penny loaf cut it into slices a quarter of an inch thick roundways toast them and then take a pint of cream and three eggs half a pint of sack some nutmeg and sweeten it to your taste steep the toast in it for three or four hours then have ready some butter hot in a pan put in the toasts and fry them brown lay them in a dish melt a little butter and then mix what is left if none put in some wine and sugar and pour over them they make a pretty plate or side dish for supper to stew a brace of carp scrape them very clean then gut them wash them and the rows in a pint of good stale beer to preserve all the blood and boil the carp with a little salt in the water in the meantime strain the beer and put it into a saucepan with a pint of red wine two or three blades of mace some whole pepper black and white an onion stuck with cloves half a nutmeg bruised a bundle of sweet herbs a piece of lemon peel as big as a sixpence an anchovy a little piece of horseradish let these boil together softly for a quarter of an hour covered close then strain it and add to it half the hard roe beat to pieces two or three spoonfuls of ketchup a quarter of a pound of fresh butter and a spoonful of mushroom pickle let it boil and keep stirring it till the sauce is thick and enough if it wants any salt you must put some in then take the rest of the roe and beat it up with the yolk of an egg some nutmeg and a little lemon peel cut small fry them in fresh butter in little cakes and some pieces of bread cut three corner ways and fried brown when the carp are enough take them up pour your sauce over them lay the cakes round the dish with horseradish scraped fine and fried parsley the rest lay on the carp and stick the bread about them and lay round them then sliced lemon notched and lay round the dish and two or three pieces on the carp send them to table hot if you would have your sauce white put in good fish broth instead of beer and white wine in the room of red wine make your broth with any sort of fresh fish you have and season it as you do gravy to fry carp first scale and gut them wash them clean lay them in a cloth to dry then flour them and fry them of a fine light brown fry some toast cut three corner ways and the rose when your fish is done lay them on a coarse cloth to drain let your sauce be butter and anchovy with the juice of lemon lay your carp in the dish 
the rose on each side and garnish with the fried toast and lemon to bake a carp scale wash and clean a brace of carp very well take an earthen pan deep enough to lie cleverly in butter the pan a little lay in your carp season with mace cloves nutmeg and black and white pepper a bundle of sweet herbs an onion and anchovy pour in a bottle of white wine cover it close and let them bake an hour in a hot oven if large if small and less time will do them when they are enough carefully take them up and lay them in a dish set it over hot water to keep it hot and cover it close then pour all the liquor they were baked in into a saucepan let it boil a minute or two then strain it and add half a pound of butter rolled in flour let it boil keep stirring it squeeze in the juice of half a lemon and put in what salt you want pour the sauce over the fish lay the rose round and garnish with lemon observe to skim all the fat off the liquor to fry tench slime your tenches slit the skin along the backs and with the point of your knife raise it up from the bone then cut the skin across at the head and tail then strip it off and take out the bone then take another tench or a carp and mince the flesh small with mushrooms sives and parsley season them with salt pepper beaten mace nutmeg and a few savoury herbs minced small mingle all these well together then pound them in a mortar with crumbs of bread as much as two eggs soaked in cream the yolks of three or four eggs and a piece of butter when these have been well pounded stuff the tenches with this sauce take clarified butter put it into a pan set it over the fire and when it is hot flour your tenches and put them into the pan one by one and fry them brown then take them up lay them in a coarse cloth before the fire to keep hot in the meantime pour all the grease and fat out of the pan put in a quarter of a pound of butter shake some flour all over the pan keep stirring with a spoon till the butter is a little brown then pour in half a pint of white wine stir it together pour in half a pint of boiling water an onion stuck with cloves a bundle of sweet herbs and two blades of mace cover them close and let them stew as softly as you can for a quarter of an hour then strain off the liquor put it into the pan again add two spoonfuls of ketchup have ready an ounce of truffles or morels boiled in half a pint of water tender pour in truffles water and all into the pan a few mushrooms and either half a pint of oysters clean washed in their own liquor and the liquor and all put into the pan or some crawfish but then you must put in the tails and after clean picking them boil them in half a pint of water then strain the liquor and put into the sauce or take some fish melts and toss up in your sauce all this is just as you fancy when you find your sauce is very good put your tench into the pan make them quite hot then lay them into your dish and pour the sauce over them garnish with lemon or you may for a change put in half a pint of stale beer instead of water you may dress tench just as you do carp to roast a cod's head wash it very clean and score it with a knife strew a little salt on it and lay it in a stew pan before the fire with something behind it that the fire may roast it all the water that comes from it the first half hour throw away then throw on it a little nutmeg cloves and mace beat fine and salt flour it and baste it with butter when that has lain some time turn and season it and baste the other side the same turn it often then baste it with butter and crumbs of bread if it is a large head it will take four or five hours baking have ready some melted butter with an anchovy some of the liver of the fish 
boiled and bruised fine mix it well with the butter and two yolks of eggs beat fine and mixed with the butter then strain them through a sieve and put them into the saucepan again with a few shrimps or pickled cockles two spoonfuls of red wine and the juice of a lemon pour it into the pan the head was roasted in and stir it all together pour it into the saucepan keep it stirring and let it boil pour it into a basin garnish the head with fried fish lemon and scraped horseradish if you have a large tin oven it will do better to boil a cod's head set a fish kettle on the fire with water enough to boil it a good handful of salt a pint of vinegar a bundle of sweet herbs and a piece of horseradish let it boil a quarter of an hour then put in the head and when you are sure it is enough lift up the fish plate with the fish on it set it across the kettle to drain then lay it in your dish and lay the liver on one side garnish with lemon and horseradish scraped melt some butter with a little of the fish liquor an anchovy oysters or shrimps or just what you fancy to stew cod cut your cod into slices an inch thick lay them in the bottom of a large stew pan season them with nutmeg beaten pepper and salt a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion half a pint of white wine and a quarter of a pint of water cover it close and let it simmer softly for five or six minutes then squeeze in the juice of a lemon put in a few oysters and the liquor strained a piece of butter as big as an egg rolled in flour and a blade or two of mace cover it close and let it stew softly shaking the pan often when it is enough take out the sweet herbs and onion and dish it up pour the sauce over it and garnish with lemon to fricassee cod get the sounds blanch them then make them very clean and cut them into little pieces if they be dried sounds you must first boil them tender get some of the rows blanch them and wash them clean cut them into round pieces about an inch thick with some of the livers an equal quantity of each to make a handsome dish and a piece of cod about one pound in the middle put them into a stew pan season them with a little beaten mace grated nutmeg and salt a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a quarter of a pint of fish broth or boiling water cover them close and let them stew a few minutes then put in half a pint of red wine a few oysters with the liquor strained a piece of butter rolled in flour shake the pan round and let them stew softly till they are enough take out the sweet herbs and onion and dish it up garnish with lemon or you may do them white thus instead of red wine add white and a quarter of a pint of cream to bake a cod's head butter the pan you intend to bake it in make your head very clean lay it in the pan put in a bundle of sweet herbs an onion stuck with cloves three or four blades of mace half a large spoonful of black and white pepper a nutmeg bruised a quart of water a little piece of lemon peel and a little piece of horseradish flour your head grate a little nutmeg over it stick pieces of butter all over it and throw raspings all over that send it to the oven to bake when it is enough take it out of that dish and lay it carefully into the dish you intend to serve it up in set the dish over boiling water and cover it with a cover to keep it hot in the meantime be quick pour all the liquor out of the dish it was baked in into a saucepan set it on the fire to boil three or four minutes then strain it and put to it a gill of red wine two spoonfuls of ketchup a pint of shrimps half a pint of oysters or mussels liquor and all but first strain it a spoonful of mushroom pickle a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour stir it all together till it is thick and boils then pour it into the dish 
have ready some toast cut three corner ways and fried crisp stick pieces about the head and mouth and lay the rest round the head garnish with lemon notched scraped horseradish and parsley crisped in a plate before the fire lay one slice of lemon on the head and serve it up hot end of section twenty section twenty one of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nine part three for lent or a fast dinner from to broil shrimp cod salmon whiting or haddock flour it and have a quick clear fire set your gridiron high broil it of a fine brown lay it in your dish and for sauce have good melted butter take a lobster bruise the spawn in the butter cut the meat small put all together into the melted butter make it hot and pour it into your dish or into basins garnish with horseradish and lemon or oyster sauce made thus take half a pint of oysters and simmer them till they are plump strain the liquor from them through a sieve wash the oysters very clean and beard them put them in a stew pan and pour the liquor over them but mind you do not pour the sediment with the liquor then add a blade of mace a quarter of a lemon a spoonful of anchovy liquor and a little bit of horseradish a little butter rolled in flour half a pound of butter nicely melted boil it up gently for ten minutes then take out the horseradish the mace and lemon squeeze the juice of the lemon into the sauce toss it up a little then put it into your boats or basins mussel sauce made thus is very good only you must put them into a stew pan and cover them close first open and search that there be no crabs under the tongue or a spoonful of walnut pickle in the butter makes the sauce good or a spoonful of either sort of ketchup or horseradish sauce melt your butter scrape a good deal of horseradish fine put it into the melted butter grate half a nutmeg beat up the yolk of an egg with one spoonful of cream pour it into the butter keep it stirring till it boils then pour it directly into your basin to dress little fish as to all sorts of little fish such as smelts roach etc they should be fried dry and of a fine brown and nothing but plain butter garnish with lemon and with all boiled fish you should put a good deal of salt and horseradish in the water except mackerel with which put salt and mint parsley and fennel which you must chop to put into the butter and some love scalded gooseberries with them and be sure to boil your fish well but take great care they do not break to broil mackerel clean them split them down the back season them with pepper and salt some mint parsley and fennel chopped very fine and flour them broil them of a fine light brown put them on a dish and strainer garnish with parsley let your sauce be fennel and butter in a boat to broil weavers gut them and wash them clean dry them in a clean cloth flour then broil them and have melted butter in a cup they are fine fish and cut as firm as a sole but you must take care not to hurt yourself with the two sharp bones in the head to boil a turbot lay it in a good deal of salt and water an hour or two and if it is not quite sweet shift your water five or six times first put a good deal of salt in the mouth and belly in the meantime set on your fish kettle with clean spring water and salt a little vinegar and a piece of horseradish when the water boils lay the turbot on a fish plate 
put it into the kettle let it be well boiled but take great care it is not too much done when enough take off the fish kettle set it before the fire then carefully lift up the fish plate and set it across the kettle to drain in the meantime melt a good deal of fresh butter and bruise in either the spawn of one or two lobsters and the meat cut small with a spoonful of anchovy liquor then give it a boil and pour it into basins this is the best sauce but you may make what you please lay the fish in the dish garnish with scraped horseradish and lemon to bake a turbot take a dish the size of your turbot rub butter all over it thick throw a little salt a little beaten pepper and half a large nutmeg some parsley minced fine and throw all over pour in a pint of white wine cut off the head and tail lay the turbot in the dish pour another pint of white wine all over grate the other half of the nutmeg over it and a little pepper some salt and chopped parsley lay a piece of butter here and there all over and throw a little flour all over and then a good many crumbs of bread bake it and be sure that it is of a fine brown then lay it in your dish stir the sauce in your dish all together pour it into a saucepan shake in a little flour let it boil then stir in a piece of butter and two spoonfuls of ketchup let it boil and pour it into basins garnish your dish with lemon and you may add what you fancy to the sauce as shrimps anchovies mushrooms etc if a small turbot half the wine will do it eats finely thus lay it in a dish skim off all the fat and pour the rest over it let it stand till cold and it is good with vinegar and a fine dish to set out a cold table to dress a jowl of pickled salmon lay it in fresh water all night then lay it in a fish plate put it into a large stew pan season it with a little whole pepper a blade or two of mace tied in a coarse muslin rag a whole onion a nutmeg bruised a bundle of sweet herbs and parsley a little lemon peel put to it three large spoonfuls of vinegar a pint of white wine and a quarter of a pound of fresh butter rolled in flour cover it close and let it simmer over a slow fire for a quarter of an hour then carefully take up your salmon and lay it in your dish set it over hot water and cover it in the meantime let your sauce boil till it is thick and good take out the spice onion and sweet herbs and pour it over the fish garnish with lemon to broil salmon cut fresh salmon into thick pieces flour them and broil them lay them in your dish and have plain melted butter in a cup or anchovy and butter baked salmon take a little piece cut into slices about an inch thick butter the dish that you would serve it to table on lay the slices in the dish take off the skin make a force meat thus take the flesh of an eel the flesh of a salmon an equal quantity beat in a mortar season it with beaten pepper salt nutmeg two or three cloves some parsley a few mushrooms a piece of butter and ten or a dozen coriander seeds beat fine beat all together boil the crumb of a halfpenny roll in milk beat up four eggs stir it together till it is thick let it cool and mix it well together with the rest then mix all together with four raw eggs on every slice lay this force meat all over pour a very little melted butter over them and a few crumbs of bread lay a crust round the edge of the dish and stick oysters round upon it bake it in an oven and when it is of a very fine brown serve it up pour a little plain butter with a little red wine in it into the dish and the juice of a lemon or you may bake it in any dish and when it is enough lay the slices into another dish 
pour the butter and wine into the dish it was baked in give it a boil and pour it into the dish garnish with lemon this is a fine dish squeeze the juice of a lemon in to broil mackerel whole cut off the heads gut them wash them clean pull out the row at the neck end boil it in a little water then bruise it with a spoon beat up the yolk of an egg with a little nutmeg a little lemon peel cut fine a little thyme some parsley boiled and chopped fine a little pepper and salt a few crumbs of bread mix all well together and fill the mackerel flour it well and broil it nicely let your sauce be plain butter with a little ketchup or walnut pickle mackerel a la maitre de hotel take three mackerel and wipe them very dry with a clean cloth cut them down the back from head to tail but not open them flour them and broil them nicely chop a handful of parsley and a handful of green onions very fine mix them up with butter and pepper and salt put your mackerel in the dish and put the parsley etc into the cut in the back and put them before the fire till the butter is melted squeeze the juice of two lemons over them and send them up hot to broil herrings scale them gut them cut off their heads wash them clean dry them in a cloth flour them and broil them lay the fish in the dish in a boat plain melted butter and mustard to fry herrings clean them as above fry them in butter have ready a good many onions peeled and cut thin fry them of a light brown with the herrings lay the herrings in your dish and the onions round butter and mustard in a cup you must do them with a quick fire to make water soaky take some of the smallest place or flounders you can get wash them clean cut the fins close put them into a stew pan with just enough water to boil them a little salt and a bunch of parsley when they are enough send them to table in a soup dish with the liquor to keep them hot have parsley and butter in a cup to stew eels skin gut and wash them very clean in six or eight waters to wash away all the sand then cut them in pieces about as long as your finger put just water enough for sauce put in a small onion stuck with cloves a little bundle of sweet herbs a blade or two of mace and some whole pepper in a thin muslin rag cover it close and let them stew very softly look at them now and then put in a little piece of butter rolled in flour and a little chopped parsley when you find they are quite tender and well done take out the onion spice and sweet herbs put in salt enough to season it then dish them up with the sauce to stew eels with broth cleanse your eels as above put them into a saucepan with a blade or two of mace and a crust of bread put just water enough to cover them close and let them stew very softly when they are enough dish them up with the broth and have a little plain melted butter and parsley in a cup to eat the eels with the broth will be very good and it is fit for weakly and consumptive constitutions to dress a pike scale and gut your pike and wash it very clean then make a stuffing in the following manner take the crumb of a penny loaf soaked in cream a quarter of a pound of butter an anchovy chopped fine a handful of parsley and a little sweet herbs chopped fine the liver or row of the fish bruised a little lemon peel chopped fine a little grated nutmeg some pepper and salt the yolks of two eggs mix all together and put it in the belly of your fish sew it up and then make it in the form of an s rub the yolk of an egg over grate some nutmeg on it and strew some crumbs of bread on it put some butter here and there on it put it on an iron plate and bake it or roast it before the fire in a tin oven for sauce 
good anchovies and butter and plain melted butter garnish with horseradish and barberries or you may boil it without the stuffing to broil haddocks when they are in high season scale them gut and wash them clean do not rip open their bellies but take the guts out with the gills dry them in a clean cloth very well if there be any roe or liver take it out but put it in again flour them well and have a clear good fire let your gridiron be hot and clean lay them on turn them quick two or three times for fear of sticking then let one side be enough and turn the other side when that is done lay them in a dish and have plain butter in a cup or anchovy and butter they eat finely salted a day or two before you dress them and hung up to dry or boiled with egg sauce newcastle is a famous place for salted haddocks they come in barrels and keep a great while or you may make a stuffing the same as for the pike and broil them to broil cod sounds you must first lay them in hot water a few minutes take them out and rub them well with salt to take off the skin and black dirt then they will look quite white then put them in water and give them a boil take them out and flour them well pepper and salt them and broil them when they are enough lay them in your dish and pour melted butter and mustard into the dish broil them whole to fricassee cod sounds clean them very well as above then cut them into little pretty pieces boil them tender in milk and water then throw them into a cullender to drain pour them into a clean saucepan season them with a little beaten mace and grated nutmeg and a very little salt pour to them just cream enough for the sauce and a good piece of butter rolled in flour keep shaking your saucepan round all the time till it is thick enough then dish it up and garnish with lemon to dress salmon or court bouillon after having washed and made your salmon very clean score the side pretty deep that it may take the seasoning take a quarter of an ounce of mace a quarter of an ounce of cloves a nutmeg dry them and beat them fine a quarter of an ounce of black pepper beat fine and an ounce of salt lay the salmon in a napkin season it well with this spice cut some lemon peel fine and parsley throw all over and in the notches put about a pound of fresh butter rolled in flour roll it up tight in the napkin and bind it about with pack thread put it in a fish kettle just big enough to hold it pour in a quart of white wine a quart of vinegar and as much water as will just boil it set it over a quick fire cover it close when it is enough which you must judge by the bigness of your salmon set it over a stove to stew till you are ready then have a clean napkin folded in the dish it is to lay in turn it out of the napkin it was boiled in on the other napkin garnish the dish with a good deal of parsley crisped before the fire for sauce have nothing but plain butter in a cup or horseradish and vinegar serve it up for a first course to dress salmon a la braise take a fine large piece of salmon or a large salmon trout make a pudding thus take a large eel make it clean slit it open take out the bone and take all the meat clean from the bone chop it fine with two anchovies a little lemon peel cut fine a little pepper and a grated nutmeg with parsley chopped and a very little bit of thyme a few crumbs of bread the yolk of a hard egg chopped fine roll it up in a piece of butter and put it into the belly of the fish sew it up lay it in an oval stew pan or a little kettle that will just hold it take half a pound of fresh butter put it into a saucepan when it is melted shake in a handful of flour stir it till it is a little brown then pour to it a pint of fish broth stir it together pour it to the fish with a bottle of white wine 
season it with salt to your palate put some mace cloves and whole pepper into a coarse muslin rag tie it put to the fish an onion and a little bundle of sweet herbs cover it close and let it stew very softly over a slow fire put in some fresh mushrooms or pickled ones cut small an ounce of truffles and morels cut small let them all stew together when it is enough take up your salmon carefully lay it in your dish and pour the sauce all over garnish with scraped horseradish and lemon notched serve it up hot this is a fine dish for a first course salmon in cases cut your salmon into little pieces such as will lay rolled in half sheets of paper season it with pepper salt and nutmeg butter the inside of the paper well fold the paper so as nothing can come out then lay them on a tin plate to be baked pour a little melted butter over the papers and then crumbs of bread all over them do not let your oven be too hot for fear of burning the paper a tin oven before the fire does best when you think they are enough serve them up just as they are there will be sauce enough in the papers or put the salmon in buttered papers only and broil them to dress flat fish in dressing all sorts of flat fish take great care in the boiling of them be sure to have them enough but do not let them be broke mind to put a good deal of salt in and horseradish in the water let your fish be well drained and mind to cut the fins off when you fry them let them be well drained in a cloth and floured and fry them of a fine light brown either in oil or butter if there be any water in your dish with the boiled fish take it out with a sponge as to your fried fish a coarse cloth is the best thing to drain it on to dress salt fish oldling which is the best sort of salt fish lay in water twelve hours then lay it twelve hours on a board and then twelve more in water when you boil it put it into the water cold if it is good it will take about fifteen minutes boiling softly boil parsnips very tender scrape them and put them into a saucepan put to them some milk stir them till thick then stir in a good piece of butter and a little salt when they are enough lay them in a plate the fish by itself dry and butter and hard eggs chopped in a basin as to water cod that need only be boiled and well skimmed scotch haddocks you must lay in water all night you may boil or broil them if you broil you must split them in two you may garnish your dishes with hard eggs and parsnips and potatoes to dress lampreys the best of this sort of fish are taken in the river severn and when they are in season the fishmongers and others in london have them from gloucester but if you are where they are to be had fresh you may dress them as you please to fry lampreys bleed them and save the blood then wash them in hot water to take off the slime and cut them into pieces fry them in a little fresh butter not quite enough pour out the fat put in a little white wine give the pan a shake round season it with whole pepper nutmeg salt sweet herbs and a bay leaf put in a few capers a good piece of butter rolled up in flour and the blood give the pan a shake round often and cover them close when you think they are enough take them out strain the sauce then give them a boil quick squeeze in a little lemon and pour over the fish garnish with lemon and dress them just what way you fancy to pitchcock eels take a large eel and scour it well with salt to clean off all the slime then slit it down the back take out the bone and cut it in three or four pieces take the yolk of an egg and put over the inside sprinkle crumbs of bread with some sweet herbs and parsley chopped very fine a little nutmeg grated 
and some pepper and salt mixed all together then put it on a gridiron over a clear fire broil it of a fine light brown dish it up and garnish with raw parsley and horseradish or put a boiled eel in the middle and the pitch cocked round garnish as above with anchovy sauce and parsley and butter in a boat to fry eels make them very clean cut them into pieces season them with pepper and salt flour them and fry them in butter let your sauce be plain butter melted with the juice of lemon be sure they be well drained from the fat before you lay them in the dish to broil eels take a large eel skin it and make it clean open the belly cut it in four pieces take the tail end strip off the flesh beat it in a mortar season it with a little beaten mace a little grated nutmeg pepper and salt a little parsley and thyme a little lemon peel an equal quantity of crumbs of bread roll it in a little piece of butter then mix it again with the yolk of an egg roll it up again and fill the three pieces of belly with it cut the skin of the eel wrap the pieces in and sew up the skin broil them well have butter and an anchovy for sauce with the juice of lemon or you may turn them round and run a skewer through them and broil them whole to far seals with white sauce skin and clean your eels well pick off all the flesh clean from the bone which you must leave whole to the head take the flesh cut it small and beat it in a mortar then take half the quantity of crumbs of bread beat it with the fish season it with nutmeg and beaten pepper an anchovy a good deal of parsley chopped fine a few truffles boiled tender in a very little water chop them fine put them into the mortar with the liquor and a few mushrooms beat it well together mix in a little cream then take it out and mix it well together in your hand lay it round the bone in the shape of the eel lay it on a buttered pan drudge it well with fine crumbs of bread and bake it when it is done lay it carefully in your dish have ready half a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of fresh butter stir it one way till it is thick pour it over your eels and garnish with lemon to dress eels with brown sauce skin and clean a large eel very well cut it in pieces put it into a saucepan or stew pan put to it a quarter of a pint of water a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some whole pepper a blade of mace and a little salt cover it close and when it begins to simmer put in a gill of red wine a spoonful of mushroom pickle a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover it close and let it stew till it is enough which you will know by the eel being very tender take up your eel lay it in a dish strain your sauce give it a boil quick and pour it over your fish you must make sauce according to the largeness of your eel more or less garnish with lemon to roast a piece of fresh sturgeon get a piece of fresh sturgeon of about eight or ten pounds let it lay in water and salt six or eight hours with its scales on then fasten it on the spit and baste it well with butter for a quarter of an hour then with a little flour grate a nutmeg all over it a little mace and pepper beaten fine and salt thrown over it and a few sweet herbs dried and powdered fine and then crumbs of bread then keep basting a little and drudging with crumbs of bread and with what falls from it till it is enough in the meantime prepare this sauce take a pint of water an anchovy a little piece of lemon peel an onion a bundle of sweet herbs mace cloves whole pepper black and white a little piece of horseradish cover it close let it boil a quarter of an hour then strain it put it into the saucepan again pour in a pint of white wine about a dozen oysters and the liquor two spoonfuls of ketchup 
two of walnut pickle the inside of a crab bruised fine or lobster shrimps or prawns a good piece of butter rolled in flour a spoonful of mushroom pickle or juice of lemon boil it all together when your fish is enough lay it in your dish and pour the sauce over it garnish with fried toasts and lemon end of section 21section twenty two of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nine part four for lent or a fast dinner from to roast a fillet or collar of sturgeon take a piece of fresh sturgeon scale it gut it take out the bones and cut it in lengths of about seven or eight inches then provide some shrimps and oysters chopped small an equal quantity of crumbs of bread and a little lemon peel grated some nutmeg a little beaten mace a little pepper and chopped parsley a few sweet herbs an anchovy mix it together when it is done butter one side of your fish and strew some of your mixture upon it then begin to roll it up as close as possible and when the first piece is rolled up roll upon that another prepared in the same manner and bind it round with a narrow fillet leaving as much of the fish apparent as may be but you must mind that the roll is not above four inches and a half thick or else one part will be done before the inside is warm therefore we often parboil the inside roll before we roll it when it is enough lay it in your dish and prepare sauce as above garnish with lemon to boil sturgeon clean your sturgeon and prepare as much liquor as will just boil it to two quarts of water a pint of vinegar a stick of horseradish two or three bits of lemon peel some whole pepper a bay leaf add a small handful of salt boil your fish in this and serve it with the following sauce melt a pound of butter dissolve an anchovy in it put in a blade or two of mace bruise the body of a crab in the butter a few shrimps or crawfish a little ketchup and a little lemon juice give it a boil drain your fish well and lay it in your dish garnish with fried oysters sliced lemon and scraped horseradish pour your sauce into boats or basins so you may fry it ragu it or bake it to crimp cod the dutch way take a gallon of pump water and a pound of salt mix them well together take your cod whilst alive and cut it in slices of one inch and a half thick throw it into the salt and water for half an hour then take it out and dry it well with a clean cloth flour it and broil it or have a stew pan with some pump water and salt boiling put in your fish and boil it quick for five minutes send oyster sauce anchovy sauce shrimp sauce or what sauce you please garnish with horseradish and green parsley to crimp skate cut it into long slips crossways about an inch broad and put it into spring water and salt as above then have spring water and salt boiling put it in and boil it fifteen minutes shrimp sauce or what sauce you like to fricassee skate or thornback white cut the meat clean from the bone fins etc and make it very clean cut it into little pieces about an inch broad and two inches long lay it in your stew pan to a pound of the flesh put a quarter of a pint of water a little beaten mace and grated nutmeg a little bundle of sweet herbs and a little salt cover it and let it boil fifteen minutes take out the sweet herbs put in a quarter of a pint of good cream a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a glass of white wine keep shaking the pan all the while one way till it is thick and smooth then dish it up 
and garnish with lemon to fricassee it brown take your fish as above flour it and fry it of a fine brown in fresh butter then take it up lay it before the fire to keep warm pour the fat out of the pan shake in a little flour and with a spoon stir in a piece of butter as big as an egg stir it round till it is well mixed in the pan then pour in a quarter of a pint of water stir it round shake in a very little beaten pepper a little beaten mace put in an onion and a little bundle of sweet herbs an anchovy shake it round and let it boil then pour in a quarter of a pint of red wine a spoonful of ketchup a little juice of lemon stir it all together and let it boil when it is enough take out the sweet herbs and onion and put in the fish to heat then dish it up and garnish with lemon to fricassee soles white skin wash and cut your soles very clean cut off their heads dry them in a cloth then with your knife very carefully cut the flesh from the bones and fins on both sides cut the flesh long ways and then across so that each soul will be in eight pieces take the heads and bones then put them into a saucepan with a pint of water a bundle of sweet herbs an onion a little whole pepper two or three blades of mace a little salt a very little piece of lemon peel and a little crust of bread cover it close let it boil till half is wasted then strain it through a fine sieve put it into a stew pan put in the soles and half a pint of white wine a little parsley chopped fine a few mushrooms cut small a piece of butter as big as a hen's egg rolled in flour grate in a little nutmeg set all together on the fire but keep shaking the pan all the while till the fish is enough then dish it up and garnish with lemon to fricassee soles brown cleanse and cut your soles boil the water as in the foregoing receipt flour your fish and fry them in fresh butter of a fine light brown take the flesh of a small sole beat it in a mortar with a piece of bread as big as a hen's egg soaked in cream the yolks of two hard eggs and a little melted butter a little bit of thyme a little parsley an anchovy season it with nutmeg mix all together with the yolk of a raw egg and with a little flour roll it up into little balls and fry them but not too much then lay your fish and balls before the fire pour out all the fat of the pan pour in the liquor which is boiled with the spice and herbs stir it round in the pan then put in half a pint of red wine a few truffles and morels a few mushrooms a spoonful of ketchup and the juice of half a small lemon stir in all together and let it boil then stir in a piece of butter rolled in flour stir it round when your sauce is of a fine thickness put in your fish and balls and when it is hot dish it up put in the balls and pour your sauce over it garnish with lemon in the same manner dress a small turbot or any flat fish to boil soles take a pair of soles make them clean lay them in vinegar salt and water two hours then dry them in a cloth put them into a stew pan put to them a pint of white wine a bundle of sweet herbs an onion stuck with six cloves some whole pepper and a little salt cover them and let them boil when they are enough take them up lay them in your dish strain the liquor and thicken it up with butter and flour pour the sauce over and garnish with scraped horseradish and lemon in this manner dress a little turbot it is a genteel dish for supper you may add prawns or shrimps or mussels to the sauce another way to boil soles take three quarts of spring water and a handful of salt let it boil then put in your soles boil them gently for ten minutes 
then dish them up in a clean napkin with anchovy sauce or shrimp sauce in boats to make a collar of fish in ragu to look like a breast of veal collared take a large eel skin it wash it clean and parboil it pick off the flesh and beat it in a mortar season it with beaten mace nutmeg pepper salt a few sweet herbs parsley and a little lemon peel chopped small beat all well together with an equal quantity of crumbs of bread mix it well together then take a turbot soles skate or thornback or any flat fish that will roll cleverly lay the flat fish on the dresser take away all the bones and fins and cover your fish with the farce then roll it up as tight as you can and open the skin of your eel and bind the collar with it nicely so that it may be flat top and bottom to stand well in the dish then butter an earthen dish and set it in upright flour it all over and stick a piece of butter on the top and round the edges so that it may run down on the fish and let it be well baked but take great care it is not broke let there be a quarter of a pint of water in the dish in the meantime take the water the eel was boiled in and all the bones of the fish set them on to boil season them with mace cloves black and white pepper sweet herbs an onion cover it close and let it boil till there is about a quarter of a pint then strain it add to it a few truffles and morels a few mushrooms two spoonfuls of ketchup a gill of red wine a piece of butter as big as a large walnut rolled in flour stir all together season with salt to your palate save some of the farce you make of the eel and mix with the yolk of an egg and roll them up in little balls with flour and fry them of a light brown when your fish is enough lay it in your dish skim all the fat off the pan and pour the gravy to your sauce let it all boil together till it is thick then pour it over the roll and put in your balls garnish with lemon this does best in a tin oven before the fire because then you can baste it as you please this is a fine bottom dish to butter crabs or lobsters take two crabs or lobsters being boiled and cold take all the meat out of the shells and bodies mince it small and put it all together into a saucepan add to it a glass of white wine two spoonfuls of vinegar a nutmeg grated then let it boil up till it is thorough hot then have ready half a pound of fresh butter melted with an anchovy and the yolks of two eggs beat up and mixed with the butter then mix crabs and butter all together shaking the saucepan constantly round till it is quite hot then have ready the great shell either of a crab or lobster lay it in the middle of your dish pour some into the shell and the rest in little saucers round the shell sticking three corner toasts between the saucers and round the shell this is a fine side dish at a second course to butter lobsters another way parboil your lobsters then break the shells pick out all the meat cut it small take the meat out of the body mix it fine with a spoon in a little white wine for example a small lobster one spoonful of wine put it into a saucepan with the meat of the lobster four spoonfuls of white wine a blade of mace a little beaten pepper and salt let it stew all together a few minutes then stir in a piece of butter shake your saucepan round till the butter is melted put in a spoonful of vinegar and strew in as many crumbs of bread as will make it thick enough when it is hot pour it into your plate and garnish with the chine of a lobster cut in four peppered salted and broiled this makes a pretty plate or a fine dish with two or three lobsters you may add one teaspoonful of fine sugar to your sauce 
to roast lobsters boil your lobsters then lay them before the fire and baste them with butter till they have a fine froth dish them up with plain melted butter in a cup this is as good a way to the full as roasting them and not half the trouble to make a fine dish of lobsters take three lobsters boil the largest as above and froth it before the fire take the other two boiled and butter them as in the foregoing receipt take the two body shells heat them hot and fill them with the buttered meat lay the large lobster in the middle and the two shells on each side and the two great claws of the middle lobster at each end and the four pieces of chines of the two lobsters broiled and laid on each end this if nicely done makes a pretty dish to dress a crab having taken out the meat and cleansed it from the skin put it into a stew pan with half a pint of white wine a little nutmeg pepper and salt over a slow fire throw in a few crumbs of bread beat up one yolk of an egg with one spoonful of vinegar throw it in then shake the saucepan round a minute and serve it up on a plate to stew prawns shrimps or crawfish pick out the tails lay them by about two quarts take the bodies give them a bruise and put them into a pint of white wine with a blade of mace let them stew a quarter of an hour stir them together and strain them then wash out the saucepan put to it the strained liquor and tails grate a small nutmeg in add a little salt and a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour shake it all together cut a pretty thin toast round a quartern loaf toast it brown on both sides cut it into six pieces lay it close together in the bottom of your dish and pour your fish and sauce over it send it to table hot if it be crawfish or prawns garnish your dish with some of the biggest claws laid thick round water will do in the room of wine only add a spoonful of vinegar to make scallops of oysters put your oysters into scallop shells for that purpose set them on your gridiron over a good clear fire let them stew till you think your oysters are enough then have ready some crumbs of bread rubbed in a clean napkin fill your shells and set them before a good fire and baste them well with butter let them be of a fine brown keeping them turning to be brown all over alike but a tin oven does them best before the fire they eat much the best done this way though most people stew the oysters first in a saucepan with a blade of mace thickened with a piece of butter and fill the shells and then cover them with crumbs and brown them with a hot iron but the bread has not the fine taste of the former to stew mussels wash them very clean from the sand in two or three waters put them into a stew pan cover them close and let them stew till all the shells are opened then take them out one by one pick them out of the shells and look under the tongue to see if there be a crab if there is you must throw away the mussel some will only pick out the crab and eat the mussel when you have picked them all clean put them into a saucepan to a quart of mussels put half a pint of the liquor strained through a sieve put in a blade or two of mace a piece of butter as big as a large walnut rolled in flour let them stew toast some bread brown and lay them round the dish cut three corner ways pour in the mussels and send them to table hot another way to stew mussels clean and stew your mussels as in the foregoing receipt only to a quart of mussels put in a pint of liquor and a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in a very little flour when they are enough have some crumbs of bread ready and cover the bottom of your dish thick grate half a nutmeg over them and pour the mussels and sauce all over the crumbs and send them to table 
a third way to dress mussels stew them as above and lay them in your dish strew your crumbs of bread thick all over them then set them before a good fire turning the dish round and round that they may be brown all alike keep basting them with butter that the crumbs may be crisp and it will make a pretty side dish you may do cockles the same way to stew scallops boil them very well in salt and water take them out and stew them in a little of the liquor a little white wine a little vinegar two or three blades of mace two or three cloves a piece of butter rolled in flour and the juice of a seville orange stew them well and dish them up to ragout oysters take a quart of the largest oysters you can get open them save the liquor and strain it through a fine sieve wash your oysters in warm water make a batter thus take two yolks of eggs beat them well grate in half a nutmeg cut a little lemon peel small a good deal of parsley a spoonful of the juice of spinach two spoonfuls of cream or milk beat it up with flour to a thick batter have ready some butter in a stew pan dip your oysters one by one into the batter and have ready crumbs of bread then roll them in it and fry them quick and brown some with the crumbs of bread and some without take them out of the pan and set them before the fire then have ready a quart of chestnuts shelled and skinned fry them in the butter when they are enough take them up pour the fat out of the pan shake a little flour all over the pan and rub a piece of butter as big as a hen's egg all over the pan with your spoon till it is melted and thick then put in the oyster liquor three or four blades of mace stir it round put in a few pistachio nuts shelled let them boil then put in the chestnuts and half a pint of white wine have ready the yolks of two eggs beat up with four spoonfuls of cream stir all well together when it is thick and fine lay the oysters in the dish and pour the ragout over them garnish with chestnuts and lemon you may ragout mussels the same way you may leave out the pistachio nuts if you do not like them but they give the sauce a fine flavour to ragout endive take some fine white endive three heads lay them in salt and water two or three hours take a hundred of asparagus cut off the green heads chop the rest small as far as is tender lay it in salt and water take a bunch of celery wash it and scrape it clean cut it in pieces about three inches long put it into a saucepan with a pint of water three or four blades of mace some whole pepper tied in a rag let it stew till it is quite tender then put in the asparagus shake the saucepan let it simmer till the grass is enough take the endive out of the water drain it leave one large head whole the other leaf by leaf put it into a stew pan put to it a pint of white wine cover the pan close let it boil till the endive is just enough then put in a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour cover it close shaking the pan when the endive is enough take it up lay the whole head in the middle and with a spoon take out the celery and grass and lay round the other part of the endive over that then pour the liquor out of the saucepan into the stew pan stir it together season it with salt and have ready the yolks of two eggs beat up with a quarter of a pint of cream and half a nutmeg grated in mix this with the sauce keep it stirring all one way till it is thick then pour it over your ragout and send it to table hot to ragout french beans take a few beans boil them tender then take your stew pan put in a piece of butter when it is melted shake in some flour and peel a large onion slice it and fry it brown in that butter 
then put in the beans shake in a little pepper and a little salt grate a little nutmeg in have ready the yolk of an egg and some cream stir them all together for a minute or two and dish them up to make good brown gravy take half a pint of small beer or ale that is not bitter and half a pint of water an onion cut small a little bit of lemon peel cut small three cloves a blade of mace some whole pepper a spoonful of mushroom pickle a spoonful of walnut pickle a spoonful of ketchup and an anchovy first put a piece of butter into a saucepan as big as a hen's egg when it is melted shake in a little flour and let it be a little brown then by degrees stir in the above ingredients and let it boil a quarter of an hour then strain it and it is fit for fish or roots to fricassee skirrets wash the roots very well and boil them till they are tender then the skin of the roots must be taken off cut in slices and have ready a little cream a piece of butter rolled in flour the yolk of an egg beat a little nutmeg grated two or three spoonfuls of white wine a very little salt and stir all together your roots being in the dish pour the sauce over them it is a pretty side dish so likewise you may dress root of salsify and scores an error chardoons fried and buttered you must cut them about six inches long and string them then boil them till tender take them out have some butter melted in your stew pan flour them and fry them brown send them in a dish with melted butter in a cup or you may tie them up in bundles and boil them like asparagus put a toast under them and pour a little melted butter over them or cut them into dice and boil them like peas toss them up in butter and send them up hot chardoons a la fromage after they are stringed cut them an inch long stew them in a little red wine till they are tender season with pepper and salt and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour then pour them into your dish squeeze the juice of orange over it then scrape parmesan or cheshire cheese all over them then brown it with a cheese iron and serve it up quick and hot to make scotch rabbit toast a piece of bread very nicely on both sides butter it cut a slice of cheese about as big as the bread toast it on both sides and lay it on the bread to make a welsh rabbit toast the bread on both sides then toast the cheese on one side lay it on the toast and with a hot iron brown the other side you may rub it over with mustard to make an english rabbit toast a slice of bread brown on both sides then lay it in a plate before the fire pour a glass of red wine over it and let it soak the wine up then cut some cheese very thin and lay it very thick over the bread and put it in a tin oven before the fire and it will be toasted and browned presently serve it away hot or do it thus toast the bread and soak it in the wine set it before the fire cut your cheese in very thin slices rub butter over the bottom of a plate lay the cheese on pour in two or three spoonfuls of white wine cover it with another plate set it over a chafing dish of hot coals for two or three minutes then stir it till it is done and well mixed you may stir in a little mustard when it is enough lay it on the bread just brown it with a hot shovel serve it away hot sorrel with eggs first your sorrel must be quite boiled and well strained then poach three eggs soft and three hard butter your sorrel well fry some three-cornered toast brown lay the sorrel in the dish lay the soft eggs on it and the hard between stick the toast in and about it garnish with a quartered orange 
a fricassee of artichoke bottoms take them either dried or pickled if dried you must lay them in warm water for three or four hours shifting the water two or three times then have ready a little cream and a piece of fresh butter stirred together one way over the fire till it is melted then put in the artichokes and when they are hot dish them up end of section twenty two